Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat with Gina Kay. I am Gina, and I am so excited to have all of you here from all over the country and all over the world. Tonight, we are going to be talking a little bit about the value of time. And we're also going to be playing with one of the new sets from the new kit. We're going to be doing a little bit of coloring and ink blending and colored pencils. So I am really excited for tonight. I hope you guys all had a great start to your week. It's Monday, which means we have two lives coming up tonight and Wednesday. But let's get right to the topic, the value of time. You know, you never really understand how valuable a moment is until it becomes a memory. Your time is more valuable than anything, even money. You know, you can always get more money, but you can't get more time. A lot of people think if they're working, they're wasting their time. But Time you enjoy wasting isn't time wasted. The best ways to spend your time are to surround yourself with the right people, let go of complaining and start appreciating, and don't participate in every argument you're invited to. Don't be afraid to ask for help and live and love in a way that makes you happy. Allow yourself to feel things completely and stop putting momentary busyness over meaningful happiness, like family, your hobbies, and your friends. You know, I remember when um, I had little kids at home. And you know that feeling of when you have little kids and you can't get them down for a nap and, and you just, things are piling up and you're just thinking, oh, you know, I'm so exhausted. I remember my dad said something to me that has stuck with me since the day that he said it. He said, Gina, the days are long, but the years are short. Enjoy every moment now. Well, welcome to anybody who just joined us. I'm excited because tonight we are going to be using the brand new kit. And I want to show you, let's switch to the overhead here. I want to show you the stamp set that we're going to be using tonight. This is the best flower stamp set. This comes in the... Uh, Nature's, let me see, I have a kit right here. The Nature's Touch card kit. This is the flower set that comes with it. And um, this has got some really big single flowers and leaves. And then it's got this one little like uh, bloom on a stem. And that takes up pretty much the whole card. But I thought tonight I would stamp one of these flowers and some leaves and color it and then add one of the greetings like wishing you the best. Maybe even I think what I want to do is I want to use the best is yet to come because that is a very good encouraging card, especially with things that are going on right now in our world. So I'm going to start by using my Misty stamping tool. And you see, I got a new mat. Isn't that nice? This is not an expensive mat. I know there's some great mats out there on the market. The glass mat by Tim Holtz is something that I have on my wish list. I definitely want to get it, um, especially because when you're doing techniques, glass is really nice. This mat doesn't hold up really well to techniques, but I want to show you what it is. The reason why I use it is because it's very matte. This is um, a tan version of it. And this is just easy liner. It's like shelf liner for closets and pantries. And it's got a little bit of a cushion, which is kind of nice because clear stamps sometimes work a little bit better when you have a cushion. And I've just been using this to film on. My other one lasted me a little over a year. And um, they're about $9.99 and you get enough for two mats out of it. So. Um, I shared half of my mat with Rena, so it was time to get a new one. Uh, but that's what this is, and I'm, I'm glad it's nice and fresh. So I'm going to use this flower here. I think well, all the flowers would, are fun to color, but this one I think will be really fun to color tonight. And then I'm going to use this leaf, and maybe I'll do a couple of the other leaves too. Now for my technique tonight, I am going to be using the Misty Stamping Tool. And I hope you guys are hearing me okay. If you, uh, I know sometimes if you're not, if a lot of people are saying they're hearing me and seeing me okay and you're not, there's a good chance that you might have a little bit of a slower internet or your internet might be a little congested in your area. Um, but if nobody can hear me, then I know it's a problem and nobody can see me. So hope this new setup is working out well for everybody. 
So I'm going to start with this flower. I'm going to put this on a piece of Gina K Designs 80 pound white cardstock. This is our pure luxury cardstock. And I did use the embossing magic pad on top first to make sure that I got rid of any excess oil or anything like that that would create a problem with embossing powder. And then I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to put, sorry for all the wrinkly sounds. I'm going to put a leaf here. And of course, these don't have to be laid out nicely because I'm going to die cut these. I'm going to put a leaf here. And then I think I'm going to just throw the two single leaves on here just in case I want to use them. And if I don't want to use them, then these are going to go in my little box of die cut pieces. You guys know I love my little box of bits and pieces. So I always like to make a few extra just in case. And if I don't use them, then I have them when I'm really in a hurry. Okay, so I have my magnet here securing that down and I'm gonna use a little bit of Versamark ink for this. And I'm gonna ink up that flower. I know you can't see this part cause it's off the screen, but that's okay. You know what it looks like to ink up a stamp. And these are newer stamps. So I'm giving them a little bit of extra inking time. And then I'm going to place that down and I don't have a piece of fabric here. So I'm just gonna take a piece of cardstock and just rub all over the surface. That just helps my hands slide easier on the uh, top of the misty. Okay. So then I am going to use some white embossing powder. Now this is the Gina K Designs Fine Detail White, and I have it in one of these Glad containers. I have several jars in here. I use white and clear the most, so. Um, and, and I think I use white probably more than I use clear. So I have my white in a big container. And if there's a little bit somewhere that you don't want it, that's really like right in the middle, so I don't have to worry. But if it was somewhere that, you know, I would, oh, I didn't, that didn't stamp well right there. Well, that's okay. We'll see what happens with that. I might be able to stamp that again after I emboss it. Okay, I know you guys can't see any of it because all you see is white, but you'll be able to see it once I start to ink this up. And I might ink, I might do another flower just in case. So I have my heat tool here and I'm just gonna heat it up for a second because the hotter it gets before you actually start embossing, the quicker the powder will emboss and the less chance you're gonna have of wrinkles occurring in your paper or warping. So let's get that done. I mean, I probably could color it to make it look fine. So let's just see, it might not be a big deal. Let's go with it. Mistakes are good. That's part of the live experience, right? We all need to, to fumble through our mistakes. Although it is only a piece of paper, so if it really bothers me, I can just quickly stamp it again. But I think I'm gonna go with it. Let's see what it looks like. It will help me be more creative trying to work through a mistake live. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get a little piece of cardstock here just to put under this so I can do a little ink blending. Now, for colors tonight, I'm not exactly sure what I want to use. I think I want to use this color that comes in the kit. This is the coral reef. So I think I want to make this flower really bright and coral. And I'm going to do that by mixing a couple colors together. So let me get my embossing powder out of the way here quickly. And then I do want to take my stamps out of my uh, misty. I'm gonna clean these stamps with my tidy towel here. You can see my tidy towel actually needs to be cleaned. But I wanna do this now so that when I go to put the greeting on, I am not mad at myself for having stamps stuck to my door. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. It's easy just to toss the misty aside and say I'll get it later and then you're all ready to do the greeting and you've got a mess to clean up. So I'm trying to be good and cleaning up as I go. Okay, so let's get that on there and we'll get the Misty out of the way. 
Okay, so I'm gonna use a blending brush for this and I'm going to start with some Peach Bellini ink. I think the Peach Bellini ink will be a great lighter version of the coral reef so that I can get the coral reef down lower onto the petals. So I'm gonna start with a blending brush and I am going to pick up some Peach Bellini on this. And then I'm gonna start right in the center of this flower and I'm not gonna use a heavy hand. I just wanna get some color on there. And the thing I like about doing this ink blending before I actually color is um, number one, it provides the lighter shade of color. So you're halfway done the flower already because you've got the lighter shade on there. But it also, something that's really cool is the color extends just outside of the flower and what's fun about that is when you die cut it, then you don't really have a white edge. It's all peach. It looks really nice. But the, the color is real light on the edge. So it's, it's hard to achieve that same look by just actually coloring it that way. So you guys can see that. That's the start of it. And that's very pretty too. I mean, if you guys are just you know, just getting into coloring and you think that's good, that's good enough for me, um, it certainly looks nice, but I picked a couple of colors here. I want to look at. So here are two colors and this one really looks like it's spot on. This one is pale vermilion. I think I said that right. Tom, correct me if I'm wrong with my pronunciations and this I'm wrong. <laughs> How do you say? Oh, okay. <laughs> and never mind. Maybe I don't want them to correct me. Um, and this is permanent red. So I want to look at both of these. I do have my pencil sharpener here. And for those of you who haven't seen me color before with colored pencils, I really like to use a sharp point and I like to use the eye point orbit. Now I have this one, which is battery operated. And let me get the other one real quick. This one. This is a big one. This one was a gift from my friend Karen Hightower and I appreciate it so much. This one actually is electric. It's got a little adapter here. So you can see the difference in the size of these. And also the plastic, the uh, sharpener part in here is part of it is plastic. In here, it's all metal. So this is the better sharpener of the two, but both work really well. And if you're traveling a lot, like I travel in the summer in our RV, I like to take this one because I don't have to run a wire to it and it still works really nicely. I get a nice sharp point and it doesn't take too much of the pencil away, which I like as well. So it's a great brand, the Eye Point Orbit. And there we go. So there is the pale vermilion. Now let's take a look at these two colors. I'll just color up here at the top. Now that looks a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna look. I think I'm gonna enjoy this one a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy that one a lot more. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one and I'm going to do a little bit of colored pencil and then I'm gonna do some Gamsol blending. So for those of you who have never heard of Gamsol, what I'm doing here is I'm just coloring down at the bottom of each of these petals. And not just at the bottom, I'm saying at the bottom on this petal, but on these petals, the bottom would be here and the petal goes up. So the flower opens and you're coloring close to where the petal would be attached to the stem, not the edges of the petals. Okay. So I'm sticking with this color. Now, if you've never heard of Gamsol before, I like using Gamsol a lot with colored pencils. I know not everybody does. It is kind of a cheater's way to blend. And let me show you what it looks like. This is Gamsol right here. It is made by Gamblin. Um, it's available at some of the big box stores, available at most art stores and most of your local craft stores will have this and some of the online craft stores have this as well. Gamsol is a, it's an artist grade odorless mineral spirits and it's different than the odorless mineral spirits that you will find at your local uh, hardware store. So I do not recommend getting Gamsol at your local hardware store. Um, that I've, I've tried that, you know, when I first got started and I found that it gave me a headache. It had a strong odor. 
um, it's just not meant for art and this is meant for art. So I would definitely give this a try. I think you'll like it a lot. Um, and I know there are some people that swear by using the other kind. I highly don't recommend that though. I just think that it's dangerous. And if, um, if you don't want to use Gamsol at all, I've heard, I've never tried this, but I hear it all the time in on the social media threads that people will say baby oil will do something similar to this. There's also a product available in the UK, and I think some stores have it now here. It's called Zest It, and that is made with... Um, it's made from oranges and you can get it in the orange scent, which is the natural scent, or they do something to it to make it unscented. And there's two ways to buy it. So that's a pretty cool product. And that works very much like uh, Gamsol. In fact, we've been looking into possibly getting that in our store. So we will keep you posted if we decide to carry it. Right now, it's hard to set up accounts anywhere in the world for new products. Um, just because of, you know, everything that's going on. So you can see I'm continuing to color just down near the edges of the petals. I really like to color. Coloring is very therapeutic, I think. I enjoy it a lot. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna do a little Gamsol blending. So let me see where my, um, my other colored pencil thing is here. I'm gonna find that and see if I have my sharpener with me. I might, here we go. Okay, so that is right here. This is a, um, it's like sandpaper. It's kind of like a nail file and I've used a nail file but I just don't know where that nail file is. So I've been using this one for a while. So this is sandpaper and it's a great way to clean your blending stumps. So I had some pink on here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sand that pink off. You can see the pink is getting onto the sandpaper and I'm turning the blending stump as I sand and that's kind of keeping it at a point. Now, sandpaper or nail files, whatever you want to use, um, is it's also really good when you have a brand new blending stump because it helps make it a little more porous, which helps it grab the Gamsol a little better. Some of the blending stumps on the market are very, very tightly woven, and you don't get that same um, porosity. Is that the right word, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to dip this into, I have some Gamsol here. This is a little candle holder I picked up. I thought it was pretty, so I, um, I'm going to put my, my blending stump into the Gamsol. Now, when you do this, you don't want to just go bloop and think that you've got enough Gamsol on there. The outside of the blending stump will look wet, but you want to get the Gamsol into the blending stump. So when you put it in there, just hold it in there for a second. If you've had trouble in the past, it may have just been that you didn't have enough Gamsol on the stick. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the end of the blending stump and you're going to put it right over the wax, the color. And then you're going to work in a circular motion and bring that color down like that. So I'm just blending that down toward the edge and it's starting to get lighter as it gets to the edge. And it keeps that dark part very close to the um, the top of the petal where it's coming out of the flower. Do we have a question? Yeah, somebody asked about the dispenser you used to use. Oh, yeah. So the dispenser I used to use um, was a Menda pump. And that's spelled M-E-N-D-A. And they, they are a company that makes pumps for the medical profession and also the beauty industry. And so I used to have a glass pump like that where you would just fill it with Gamsol and then you'd press on the uh, rim of it and Gamsol would come up and fill up the little cup. And the main reason I don't use that anymore is because I absolutely love to take my coloring all over the place. So um, the, you can't travel with that pump. It's, it's meant to just sit on your desk forever. Uh, 
it'll spill everywhere if you, you know, tip it. So I just stopped using it just because I was traveling a lot and I got used to just having a little jar with me and then my regular plastic bottle of Gamsol. But uh, it, yeah, it's a very nice tool. Okay, so here's where I missed my, see where I missed my edges there. So hopefully I am filling that in in the right spot. We'll know as soon as we cut this out with the die if I did that right. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions at all, you can ask them. And Tom is trying to catch as many of them as he can. And he'll just shout them out to me and I'll be more than happy to answer them. I think this color is good for the coral reef. So for these little parts, I'm just actually blending and softening the color. Yeah, I'm liking this. And it's a great color with the peach. So let's just take a look. I think that's gonna be a nice match together. Yes. Okay, so I have colored in all the areas or blended in all the areas that had colored pencil. And you can actually use the little bit that's left on the tip in some of these smaller areas just to add color. It'll be a little bit lighter, but that's nice because you get a variety of different shading. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little bit more and I'm thinking that that's going to go up there. Would this work over ink with watercolor pencils? Um, well, the thing about watercolor pencils is that the question was, will this work over ink with watercolor pencils? So when you're using watercolor pencils, they're very different than these types of pencils. These types of pencils are a wax base. And if you're using something like the Faber-Castell polychromo pencils, they are almost like an oil base. And those two types of um, pencils need to have something that breaks down that wax or oil. So Gamsol will do that. With a watercolor pencil, you really don't need that because water will break down the, basically watercolor pencils are like dry paint. And so you color with them and then you add water and it does the same kind of thing, it blends it. So you could use a blending stump, but you really wouldn't need Gamsol, you would just need water. So I hope that makes sense. Water is the Gamsol for a watercolor pencil. It blends it without the need for the chemical. So that is the answer to that. So I'm getting there. I'm going to keep going here. And when my pencil starts to get too dull that I can't fit into these tiny lines, I'm just going to sharpen it up again. That'll give me some ability to get into those small areas, especially these kinds of spots that are really tiny. I'm going to actually just run the blending stump over that and just let the color kind of flow into those spots. It's these bigger spots that I'm getting more of my shading out of. So here we are. We are at... Uh, <laughs> We are past the summer solstice, which means that, I hate to say it, but the days are getting shorter, but not much yet. But wow, I can't believe how fast time goes. This is like a perfect thing to talk about with my, with my theme tonight and the value of time. I mean, it was not that long ago, and I, I vividly remember packing your orders while everybody was still on the stay-at-home order, and it was snowing and it, it just feels like it wasn't that long ago. It feels like it was just a few weeks ago and it, it actually was just not that long ago. And it's amazing how quickly the time passes. What color is that pencil? This pencil is called Permanent Red. And I think it's the perfect match for coral reef, cardstock and ink. So this is coming along pretty good, pretty relaxing activity. You know, you can always just, um, and you don't have to emboss first if you don't want to. I just felt like I wanted the lines to be white instead of black or 
you know, or even a natural color, one of our amalgam colors. I just wanted it to be white. I wanted to be able to see that white shine through there. So that's looking pretty good. What do you think? I like that. Okay, so now let's do the leaves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get another blending brush here. I think this had some green on it. And I think I'll use a little bit of apple mint on there first because apple mint is such a nice light green. And I'll just get a little bit of ink blended onto them with the apple mint. And again, I'm not real worried about the blending because I want that ink to go outside of the lines a little bit. I guess I didn't emboss that one very well, but I've got backup leaves here. So I'm not worried. It's hard to see the embossing powder until you actually get that ink on there to see if you did a good job. And of course, you know, that was the first time I used that stamp set. So, you know, if it doesn't work out the first time, just go ahead and ink it up and do it a second time because ink doesn't always um, adhere well to the stamp the first time. And I know that we've talked about that before. So I just wanna lay down this light color and then I wanna get a darker color on there. Okay, that looks good. I don't have a paper towel here, but I do have the inside of my shirt and it's so light you won't even see it. I know it's crazy, right? Who does that except me? <laughs> okay, so now let's find a nice green to work with. This is kind of a nice green. Yeah, I like that. So this one is Kelly Green. I think I use this one a lot, actually. Oh, and a few of you in the last live were asking about my bracelet. So this bracelet, this bracelet is the bracelet Tom gave me. It's made of trash. How many pounds of trash is this made out of, Tom? 10. 10 pounds of trash this bracelet is made out of. They collect the trash from the ocean. It's plastic from the ocean and they collect it and then they make bracelets out of it. So when Tom was out of town, he bought one for me, one for Alicia and one for Rena. So he got 30 pounds of trash out of the ocean right there. But this bracelet is my, um, my medical alert bracelet because I'm a diabetic. And I got this from a place called Lauren's Hope. And you buy the tag and they have all different style tags. And then you buy different clip on bracelets for it. And so you can wear medical alert bracelets to match your outfits. And it's all fine jewelry. Like these are all sterling silver. They do 14 karat gold too, but that's a lot more expensive. Um, but yeah, I like it a lot. And it makes me feel like I'm not wearing just, you know, kind of that old fashioned red plus that they used to have. Um, it's kind of nice. So here I'm coloring just all along those edges. And I could probably zoom in just a little more, but you know, the minute I try something like that, should I try it? Let me just see if I can zoom in just a little bit more for you here. There we go. You can see things a little closer. Does that still look clear? Yes. Good, okay. All right, so I'm just adding that dark green up in close to where the vein of the leaf is. And then I'm going to use a blending stump. Here's one that has a little green on it. So I'm just going to go ahead with that and dip it into the Gamsol. Remember to hold it there for just a second. And then I'm going to blend some of that out. That blends really nicely with apple mint. I like that. And again, there's like some great um, colored pencil artists out there. If you want to learn how to do real colored pencil coloring, there's, um, of course, Kathy Rakusen is amazing. Um, Kitten Clowder, they have a great website where they do classes. You can go to online card classes and they've got colored pencil classes. Christina Warner knows how to do watercolor and colored pencil. But me, here what you're learning here is you're learning the cheater's way to do it. And um, it's definitely faster and it's definitely fun. So 
I don't mind doing it this way. I've been practicing a little bit though with um, using just colored pencils. I did use just colored pencils the other night during our release party where I um, did colored pencils right on craft. And when you do that, I mean, like I can shade a little bit in there without having to use the Gamsol and just bring some of that color up. But it does take practice. And Gamsol is just really easy and just super fun. Do we sell blending stumps? We do not sell blending stumps, but I know that you can get blending stumps at any art store. Uh, a lot of the big box stores have them. And I know a lot of your favorite online stores also have them and your local craft stores as well. I know they have them at Simon's Stamp. I know they have them at um, some of the craft stores that we taught at, like Scrap Mania and the Doodlebug. And, oh, there's so many, there's so many. Um, and if you want to find a local store that carries our products so you can support your local businesses, uh, you can go over to the Gina K Designs website and we have a tab that says our uh, retailers. If you click on that tab, you'll find all of the retailers that have accounts with us that carry our products. And that includes all over Europe, Australia, um, pretty much all over the world. So you can find a store near you, all the stores in Canada that carry our products. Now, to be honest with you, we don't know every store that carries our products from Canada because Canada has a big distributor up there that carries our products. So a lot of the local stores buy from them and they might not be listed on our website if they haven't gotten in touch with us to let us know. Um, so you can certainly call your local store and see if they have our products. And if they do, but they don't have what you're looking for, they can always order from us. So that's a way to support your local business. And of course, a lot of the online stores, if you don't have a local store, I know there are few and far between. A lot of the big online stores like Simon Says Stamp and Butterfly Reflections, um, they carry our stuff. So you can ask them for something that you can't find locally. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stick with just these three. I'm not gonna do this one because I kind of messed up right here with the um, <laughs> with the embossing powder. I didn't see that I didn't get enough on there, but that's okay. I think this is all I'm gonna need. So now let me get my blending stumps out of the way and my colored pencils. Um, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut these out, but I'm gonna use my die cutting technique and for those of you who maybe it's your first time joining tonight, I just, uh, I don't know how many, but we can switch cameras to the front camera. And um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my die cutting machine. It's hard for me to get the die cutting machine right under the camera. So I like to do my die cutting so that you can see my face. What I'm gonna do is I have a piece of Dusty Rose cardstock here. Dusty Rose. And Dusty Rose, Peach Bellini, we have a few cardstocks that we call mid-weight. They're not quite as heavy as our 100-pound heavy base weight, but they're heavier than our layering weight. So we call them mid-weight. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut out a little template of that big flower and then the leaves. Now, I'm not sure which of these two leaves I colored, but I think it's this one here. So I'm just gonna line it up and make sure that that's right. And once I know that's right, then I'm going to cut out four templates, just plain cutting out. I'm not, going, I'm not cutting out a design. I'm just cutting out the shape. Okay. So then... Let me move this out of the way. Now, all these pieces that I cut out, you can keep these and you can stamp your images on these and maybe do a real graphic look where you've got black lines with the pink and then you can just color in with Gamsol and colored pencils a darker pink. So don't throw these away. These are useful. You can also use them as masks. They're not perfect because they do have a little bit of an edge, but if you need a quick mask, you can always butt this up against a flower and use it for a mask. Now I'm going to switch, have Tom switch to the overhead for a second. So I can show you this, if you haven't seen this before. So what I'm gonna do here now is I have my image. Let's go 
up here. I have my image and then I have this template that I made, right? Now I'm gonna get some purple tape. I've got some purple tape here and then I've got my Brutus Monroe scissors that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna cut these out. It doesn't really matter. They don't have to be square or anything like that. They just have to be, you know, separated. It makes it easier. I probably could do a couple of these at the same time. I think I'll give it a try. We'll see how it works. <laughs> Some of them might overlap though, so we'll see. I'll start though with the flower. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna line that up so you can see that it is gonna cut evenly. I have trouble doing that um, just by lining the die up. Things shift, I just don't ever feel like I, I get it perfect and it's it can be frustrating, especially after you've colored something like this and you've put a lot of time into it. So what I'm gonna do here is now that I know that that's where I want it to cut, I'm going to put a little bit of tape here and I'm gonna put a little bit of tape here just to hold that down. Put a tiny piece here. I don't wanna, I can go over this one though because that's a bad one. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my die and I'm gonna slip that right into place and I'll feel it snap in. You can feel it sink down in there. Now once you've done that, you can take some purple tape you know it's in there because you can push around and it doesn't move. It's down in the hole. You can put a little bit of purple tape on either side of that. And then I'll put my other plate on top and I will run it through the machine. So you can go back to me, front shot. If you want Tom, front shot. <laughs> What's that? We are looking at about two weeks before the kit is back in stock. We're still waiting for the stamps and dies to arrive. And once they arrive, then we can put them all on the magnets and we can get the kits assembled. Okay, we can go back to the overhead again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just punch that out. And you can see how nicely that cut. That is, let me just back out a little bit because it might be a little blurry. There we go. Isn't that pretty? And I love that the edge has that little soft peach bellini color on it. It's just a fun way to color. Okay, so you can save these um, little templates that you make and you can throw them in with your stamp set, in with your die set, and reuse them if you want. I'm going to reuse the purple tape on this one for sure. Let's see here. Did you know ThermoWeb? I think I told you one of the last lives. Um, ThermoWeb came out with a new kind of purple tape. It's not as sticky. And um, it's pretty cool, actually. So I'm going to put that away. And then I'm going to see what I can do with this. All right. So that. And, you know, this is a project right now. Like, this is something that is really fun to do when you don't know what to do. Just color a bunch of these little elements out and um, cut them out, color them and cut them out. Zoom back out. Oh yeah, let me zoom back out here a little bit. There we go, and I will move up. Thank you. It's good to have you on that side there, Tom. You that still was, have to stamp. That was Tara. Oh, <laughs> that's good to have her there then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hopefully this is better. And then I'll see if I can get that last one on there too. We'll take a look. I'm gonna cut that kind of close. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, and I have my purple tape all stuck to my stand here. I like to reuse it. Yeah, so the new purple tape, you don't have to really like tap on your clothing or anything. It just, it's very mild tape. All right, and I'm gonna drop that in where I can feel it drop in. There we go. I felt that. I need a little bit more purple tape. And then we'll do these two. It's nice to do them all at the same time. But 
like I said, you know, if you don't have any mojo and you don't know what to do, this is a great activity to just, um, just kind of color and cut out pieces and start a little collection of bits and pieces for your uh, future cards. Then when you have that sympathy card that you need, or you forgot to make a wedding card and you're all ready and you need to run out the door soon, you've got beautiful bits and pieces that are all ready to go and you can just assemble them, add a greeting, create your little bouquet and you are good to go. Okay, so that is quite the look. I'm gonna stick this over here and then I'm going to run it through. Sorry, my hand, there we go. <laughs> All right, and back to overhead. Punch these out. See how nice that looks? I think it's worth it. It's worth a little bit of extra time. I have spent time coloring things and then cut them wrong, and they just, it's just disappointing. Now, while I have this out, I think I'm going to cut an oval. I'm gonna use this size oval, I think. Let's take a look at the stamp set together and see what we think. So this stamp set, I wanna use the best. So the best is yet to come. Maybe I should use a bigger, bigger one because I want the flowers to be on that as well. Yeah, I think I'll use the bigger one. So the best is yet to come, that'll fit on there. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out a white panel using the double stitched oval, and I'm gonna cut a black layer using the single stitched oval. These are actually two separate sets of dies, and you can use them singly, and they both work for the same applications. They're pretty close in size, but this one is just one eighth of an inch smaller than this one, and that allows me to do that sweet little shadow layer that I love so much. So I'm gonna start by cutting out a double stitched one here. And then I'm gonna cut a single stitched one. Sorry about my hand, <laughs> I'm flying around. <laughs> okay, so here we go. There is the double stitched one. And then I will do the single stitched one in black. So I've got some black cardstock hiding over here somewhere. And this one, I can actually use this whole piece too. I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's, uh, let's get that right about there. Hopefully that'll work. And then I'll cut this out. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of um, I'm gonna do a little bit of stenciling for the background. So the, these two panels now are gonna be able to work together to create that nice little shadow edge. It's such a clean, crisp look. They are truly my favorite guys. I use them all the time. You guys are probably sick of them, but I mean, isn't it good to? buy a set of dies and know that there are 9 million different ideas out there for them. Okay, so we're gonna use this cardstock and I am going to use my score buddy to score this. Let me move my pieces away. I'm gonna score this at four and a quarter inches. So this is cut this is our shortcut cardstock, and this is pre-cut like this, and then you score it. And the reason why we don't score them is because, you know, you can buy these and then you can do gatefold cards. You can do other different fancy folds. You just have to put the score lines in. But it's nice because you get 10 sheets, and it's just a nice taste of this color. So this is the coral reef. And then I'm gonna grab my paper cutter here. This is the We Are Memory Keepers paper cutter. I'm gonna see if I can cut this black piece out. So my white panel that I wanna use is going to be three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. So this one I want to be three and seven eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna cut that here. 
by five and one eighth of an inch. You know, you just hate to throw away this black cardstock. You can also cut this out using our new Master Layouts die set. That is on its way back in, and I'm thinking it should be in in about two weeks. That's what I'm hoping for. And then that you can just put right on top. And, you know, then you're not wasting this, like a whole bunch of black cardstock here. You know, that'll go right on top and it'll look very pretty. And you'll never know that there is a hole back there, especially because you're going to put this huge oval on top of it, too. So most of it's going to get covered up. All right. So now I'm going to get a little piece of cardstock here and. I'm going to use the stencil that came in the kit. I really love this one. This is the ornamental fan stencil. And I want to just do like enough shading that it just appears to be a shadow back there. So the best color for that, I really like our amalgam ink in Whisper. This is the Whisper Amalgam Ink. It's a super light gray. And even though it's amalgam ink, which for those of you that don't know about our amalgam ink, the amalgam ink is an ink that can be used for colored pencils, watercolor, and um, Copics. So you can use Gamsol with this. Nothing will make this bleed. Where our regular dye ink is friendly with Copic markers, but it's not friendly with watercolor. So this will do it all. And we have this in six colors. We have um, Obsidian, which is our black. And then we have Whisper, which is this soft gray and several other colors in the collection. So I'm gonna use another blending brush for this. And I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of that color. And this color is so light and so soft that you almost feel like maybe it's not even working when you're, when you're doing your stenciling. You're looking at it going, I don't see anything. And this, is, again, is one of those inks that as it dries, it gets very, very smooth and um, dries up a little bit lighter once it's dry. And that's, you know, that's because when it's wet, it's just darker. But this is a really nice, very, very soft gray. And it's a little bit of a warm gray. This is also a perfect ink for no line coloring because you can use it with any coloring medium. And um, it's, it's truly just a very, very light gray line that, that you get from it. So I like it. I like it a lot. What happened to Mary Monday? Oh, Merry Monday. Well, we did Merry Monday for about 10 weeks. So we did close to 30 different Christmas cards. And um, we just took a little break because the summer schedule is only giving us two nights a week together. And we have so many new products to share. So I thought we'd take a little break on Merry Monday, but we'll be picking it up again once our fall and winter schedule picks up. All right. So there we go. You can see that. You can almost just see it when I turn it a little bit. Does that look pretty good on your screen, Tom? Yes. Okay. So I love that color. It's so soft. It's so nice. Just a beautiful color. Okay. So, and make sure you check back at some of the old Merry Monday videos because there are so many Christmas cards out there that we did. And, of course, you can switch them up by adding different stamps. And do a whole variety of Christmas cards. All right. Yeah, back when we were doing Merry Monday, we had kind of homework where after we did the card, then you guys would make or we'd all make a couple of them and address them and write in them and put the stamp on and put it ready to go so that you'd be able to mail those in early December. Um, I tried my best to do as much of that as I could, um, but I still have some work to do. So this is going to go on top of my coral reef. I guess I really didn't need all that tape, but now I do, so it'll work. All right. So now it's time to lay out our design. Well, I'm gonna definitely stamp the greetings using the Misty because I 
I'm going to stamp them on that oval and they are new stamps. So I'm going to lay things out first to see what I want it to look like. And I definitely can adhere these two pieces together. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to adhere the white oval to the black oval. It's easier for me when I like stand up and look over it, but I'm going to do the best I can here. Luckily, I'm using the Gina K tape and it's a little bit forgiving so you can move things around until it's perfect and then it will not come apart once you make it permanent. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I think if I can get my greeting over here, then I can do my flower and have the leaves. This is such a nice, big, beautiful flower. I can have the leaves wrap around it. Put that there like that. So let's just take a look at the greetings here. So I have the best and then I want is yet to come. So I think I will stamp that right about down here because then I can do the leaves kind of coming up over it and then is yet to come underneath. All right. So I was showing this on the uh, release party live video. When you have a brand new stamp like that and it's so crispy, crystal clear, um, it's good to rub your finger all over it and get it cloudy. See how it's starting to get cloudy? That kind of wipes off whatever is on that thing from the manufacturing process and it makes your ink stick to it better. Okay. And then we're going to use is yet to come and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just rub my skin. Sometimes I'll just take it and like rub it on my arm. Okay. Now I'm not going to have this here. I'm going to actually just take this right to the misty. Why are both sentiments at the same time? I think I might. I'm going to try to do that. Sometimes I want to get the greetings closer together. And you see see how the border of the, the base up of the stamp, that's the flat part, extends past the image itself. So then, you know, sometimes you you can't get it close enough. And it looks fine when you're ready to stamp it. And then you look at it and it just you know, design wise, it feels like the words should be closer together. So I think, I think that might happen here. So I think I am going to do these separately. And then I can put that here. Mm -hmm. Move it down just a little bit. Make sure that that's going to fit in there. It might not. We'll put it up higher. Okay. maybe even a little higher. So yeah, I mean, it depends. It really depends on the stamp and how it was designed as far as the base up of the stamp, whether or not you can actually do that. So I'm going to use the black onyx ink for this. It's a bigger stamp. So I want to have a little bit more ink pad surface space, but it's taking ink pretty well now because I rubbed it on my skin, even though it's a brand new stamp. And then I just need a little piece of cardstock here that I can help it. Where has Rena been? Well, Rena is in school. She actually is going to beauty school right now. And so she has been putting in some long days. You know, beauty school is very different than college because in college you might have you know, two classes in a day and they're each an hour long and then the rest of your day you're free. In beauty school, you are there for eight hour days, five days a week. So she's been really, really busy. All right, we're gonna put that there and hope that, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to get that that close. So I'll see how that looks. I'm really pushing it over to the edge here because the flowers are big. We'll see how that looks. Okay, so for these littler greetings, I like to use my um, ink cube. But Rena does, she has been doing videos. She's got four mini videos that are in our Facebook group right now. And I think she's compiling them into one YouTube video or two YouTube videos. And then she's also working on a regular YouTube video. She's just been really busy and um, 
she's doing so well and she loves it so much. So I'm really excited for her. There we go. The best is yet to come. So you can see how close I got those greetings together. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I tried to stamp them both at the same time. I know, but I miss her too. Yes. Petty concerns? Teddy. Teddy. Oh, Teddy. Oh, little Teddy. Well, Teddy is struggling a little bit. She, um, she's just getting to that point where um, her tongue has gotten a little bit bigger from the tumor. And uh, she is struggling. So we are doing our best to give her all the food that she loves, making sure that she gets to have everything that she loves and um, making sure that she's comfortable and that she feels good. We've had her to the vet a couple of times and they've given her some medicine to help with discomfort. So yeah, thank you for thinking of her. She's our sweet little girl, but uh, we don't wanna, you know, we, we wanna keep her as long as we can, but we also wanna make sure that she's comfortable. So it's, it's hard. I think I'm gonna put these leaves both down here like that. And then I'll put this leaf coming up here. Yes, that will do it. Okay. So now I got to tape that oval down Need a little bit more tape than I had. And it is shifted down just a little bit on the card, but that's okay. You know, that's the cool thing about these shapes. I mean, you can put them anywhere that you want on the card. And then I'll pop this up with some foam squares or some foam tape. Maybe I'll use some foam tape for this. And then first I'll get the leaves in position. So those will go directly onto the design. You might hear Tom clicking away on the keyboard. Okay, so there we go. And then this one will come around here like this. Okay. I love this color, Coral Reef. Again, this is one of those colors that I just don't use enough. You know, you get stuck in your ways and you don't branch out a lot. And this is just one of those beautiful colors. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of foam tape on the back of this. I want to get my sticky scissors. I have some sticky scissors here. These are the Tim Holtz scissors. I have these, these are my sticky ones. And then these are my good Tim Holtz scissors. They don't get to touch sticky stuff. Yes, I like all of the tools. There's so many good ones. Room for everybody. I really think I wanna put some gems on this too. I haven't been using any of the gems because I was making sympathy cards and stuff and I didn't want them to be too sparkly. So this will go right there. And then let me get some gems. So these are the Aqua Aura gems. No, these are the Angel Aura gems. Aqua Aura is something else. All right. And they come in lots of different sizes. So I like to do threes. I think threes look really good. So let me get my connect glue. I have this little nifty holder. This nifty holder was printed with a 3D printer by Make It by Marco. And they have an Etsy store, which is really cool. And then the connect glue just fits right in there like that. And so it doesn't have like air bubbles when you go to use it. All right, so I think I'm gonna put one here. Let's see, I can put a bigger one up here. Bigger one up here. And then I'll put like a medium, oh, I can put a real big one up there. Any Halloween cards in the future? Halloween? Yeah, we can do Halloween. I don't feel Halloween yet, but we can definitely do that when it gets a little bit closer to August. It's a good idea. Yeah, well, I haven't done a lot of Halloween cards, so. All right, I'm going left-handed here with the glue, which is crazy, and then I'm dropping the gem on there. Let's see, let me use my scissors to let go. 
This thing's really sticky. The nice thing about the Connect Glue is it goes on white, but it dries clear. So let's put a little dot there. Sequence going on with the hole up or down? Um, the sequence, the hole up or down. Well, the hole goes all the way through, but um, when you're doing a sequin, you want to do, um, you want to have it so that the cup is facing upward. So the flatter part of the sequin is against the, um, the card. Okay, so there is my finished card. And you can see my little angel aura gems there. That was fun. That's a fun card to make. I like that. I love how big these flowers are too. I mean, you can just suck up a whole front of a card with one flower. And there's a couple different styles in that set, which is fun. I like this one too. This feels like it could fit up there nicely and you could really fill a whole card front with those and then do a big cutout word over it. That would be pretty too. So that is the best flowers. That's what the stamp set is called, the best flowers. And it comes in the new, um, grab that, Nature's Touch card kit. Get all that stuff in the card kit. And that, we have more card kits coming. I know we're out of stock on it, but I know a lot of you have it already. So I definitely want to do some things with it so you guys can see how fun it is. All right. Well, that is the finished card. And I guess we can go to the other shot because now it is time for me to give you my final quote of the evening. So we talked a little bit about the value of time and how, oh boy, I'll tell you, I can, I can really kind of go down that rabbit hole of just getting on Facebook and spending a lot of time talking to a lot of people about a lot of things that really in the big picture don't really matter. And I know you guys all know what I'm talking about, but, but here's my final quote for the night. Before I get there, because I like to end with the quote, um, if you're new to Gina K Designs and this is your first time watching me live, we have a really fun Facebook group. It's called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. And you can head over to Facebook and search that. That comes up and ask to join the group. Our moderators will invite you in, let you in. And it's a really, really super supportive group for crafters of all skill levels. So I hope you'll join us over there because it's a lot of fun. I'm very active in that group. That is one place where I can waste a lot of time. But it's not wasting time if it's fun, right? It's good. It's my hobby and I love it. It's also my job, but I love it. All right. So the value of time. So my final quote for the night is things which matter the most must never be at the mercy of things which matter the least. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I'll be back on Wednesday with Whimsical Wednesday. We'll be playing with some more new release products and I'll come up with a fun technique for you. In the meantime, you have a great night. Have a great tomorrow and I will see you again on Wednesday. Love you all. Bye-bye.